This episode of Life After Injury has been brought to you by Fornos Law Firm, devoted to optimizing your legal results. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Push Rim Life After Injury Podcast. This is episode eight, Pet Peeves. I'm Ray Pizarro. I'm Boris Del Cid. And I'm Richard Bell. We want to welcome everyone for joining us once again, all our members, family, and friends to another topic of discussion, which is pet peeves, things that get under our skin after getting hurt and life after injury. So we're going to kick off and let Richard uh, share with us his uh, experiences with uh, that um, you know frustrating topic. Yeah, well, for me, living downtown, one of the first things I encountered when I got out of the hospital was high elevator buttons. Uh, I had limited uh, use of my arms, and I had a hard time reaching above my chin. And in one instance, I did get caught in an elevator at the World Trade Center for a period of about 15 minutes before somebody called the elevator Scary. and rescued me. But um, they did take notice. Apparently, there are cameras there and security saw me stuck. So I went back a couple of months later and they moved all of the elevator panels down, which was great. Another thing I encountered was heavy doors, um, doors that are, you know, for quadriplegic, it's pretty difficult to keep your balance as you're trying to open the door without right. falling out of your chair. Right. And um, I, there's heavy doors everywhere but um one particular place was the Wells Fargo Towers but now they have changed all the doors i guess because i frequent that area right to automatic sliding doors so everything's kosher there nice um another thing is uh curb curb cut the lips on the curb cuts where you can catch your casters and go head first what well, yeah and, um, you know, you guys, we've talked about that before. It's, it's not pleasant. You know, you can incur dental work and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but, um, also along with that are curb cuts that are, are curb, curb cuts that are too steep. Um, I, yes. especially like in Hollywood, Pasadena, the old school. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. Those, those are horrible. Finally, for me, um, having to go through the kitchen to get to my seat in a restaurant. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's happened to me a couple of times in the L.A. area. Um, it, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it is quite irritating. And inconvenient. You know, you don't want to be going through everyone's kitchen. and, and Especially the, when you're hungry. <laughs> that's right. And, and you know, you think it's a good... Also, I'd love to let people know, Rich, it, also a good idea to let managers know about the weight of the doors. You know, maybe they could make small modifications uh, in your favor. Well, definitely you have to speak up for yourself mm -hmm. um, with elevators, uh, heavy doors. In my apartment building, I live in a high rise. Um, I had issues with the doors there. And um, actually, just by complaining to the manager, they changed a lot of the doors uh, so that they're completely accessible for me. Good work. That way I can sneak out and get to the bar in the middle of the night without the wife catching. Nice. So, Boris, how about you, man? Well, I have a problem with parking spaces. And I'm sure you have obviously experienced this some point in time. Um, those of us who drive um, and the ones, uh, those of us who do not drive but uh, need a ramp um, to get in and out of our cars can testify to this pet peeve. We go out to the supermarket, the pharmacy, wherever it is, a restaurant, uh, the movies, and we look for the parking spaces and we see, or I, at least I do, I see people coming in and out cars, uh, with the placards, but they're coming out like nothing's wrong with them. I do understand there are all kinds of, um, handicaps and i hate to use that but disabilities whatever the disability may be people who need the ramps should have a space where it says ramps only it says van accessible but they ignore them so when i come in into a parking space and i see somebody staring me straight down and looking at me and going opening the door, getting out of their car and, and jumping out and, and, and running to, to the movies, it just really irritates me. It just, it, it, it's, it very much means, to me, it means like, I really don't care. I have one of these placards. 
my friend's a doctor and he gave me one of these and you have to take it. So I usually try to check to see if they're um, still, you know, operable because some of them are expired. I, I just encountered that the other day. Remember, Ray, I called you? That's right. Somebody comes in, takes a space. It was a temporary one. That temporary placard, when I approach the car and I look at it, it says April 2012. Well, I'm going to tell you something. For those of you who have smartphones, there there is an app for handicap parking violations. Excuse me. Check it out and download it. You take a picture of it. It, t- it gives you the instructions. And um, those are steep fines to get if you get caught. It's like $1,100 or so. So um, part of that, part of the fine will go to your uh, charity of choice, which should be spinal cord injury related uh, charity. But that's a whole other episode. There's other disabilities. Right. There are other disabilities. But for our purposes, SCI. Anyways, um, so there, there should be really a distinction between um, disabled individuals who absolutely require space to get out of their car, reserved parking spaces right. for that. For the other ones that have whatever disability they may have, and I respect them because I know there's all kinds, maybe as a, a wider um, parking space that does not necessarily require a car, for a car that does not necessarily require a ramp to get in and out. I'm jumping to the next one. Um, have you ever gone out somewhere and you're rolling and some smart aleck comes up and goes, slow down, you're going really fast. No racing about around here. Hey, you're going to get a speeding ticket. <laughs> There's some jokers out there who think that that's the first time we've ever heard that and or think that that's humorous. Stop that. Do not do that. It is not funny. It wants to make me want to tell you to... um not talk to me. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. I, I almost did. I almost went, when you know, jumped the line. That's one of those things. So if you know people, tell them not to come out with jokes like that. And I'm sure they don't mean, you know, they mean well when they say it, but they're not really thinking it through. Well, right. yeah, but it's like, dude, I'd much rather just, you know, you don't say anything. Or give me a thumbs up, right? Th- like, yeah. Good job. Keep, yeah, keep good pushing. job. Hey, yeah, <laughs> keep pushing. You're looking good. <laughs> All right. Well, next next subject. Have you ever gone to a restaurant or to a movies or any place where there's service involved, a hotel, and you address the individual and say, hello, good evening, uh, reservations for two, Boris or Richard or, or Ray with their wives, and your wives are right next to you, and they said, they look straight at your wife, and they go, can he sit in that table, uh, or, or is he going to need uh, another chair, or can he stay in his chair? No good, bro. And they do not, do not look at you in the eye and address you as an individual. I thought we felt low because our, that, we, that makes us feel like ground low, right? That is so rude. I think it's just because we have sexy wives. I think so. And, and, but see what happens when it's, you know, a lo- another, lo- another lady looking at your wife. I don't know if, you know, but it's just, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's like they're looking down. So they rather not look down. And also it's like, okay, he's in a, he or she is in a wheelchair. They're not up to par. They're probably mentally also disabled. Well, I'll tell you what. Next time you see that or, um, experience that, Cordially, but firmly, refer to that individual, look him in the eye, and engage him in the conversation again. Or you're going to get something like my wife says, you can ask him. He speaks. Straight up. Straight up. Yeah. So uh, there's a whole bunch more other pet peeves, but those three right now are bugging me. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to pass the ball to you. Right Ray. on. Well, well said, guys, man. I, I, I relate on, on both of you guys' stories, but, uh, for me, I mean, my big pet peeve is, you remember when we have to, we have an emergency where we have to go catheterize and we're racing to find the restroom. All of a sudden we bolt through the restroom and there's you know, a few stalls available for able body people to, to use, but you end up going to the wheelchair stall and it's occupied. 
And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this guy just took the hand. And he's an able-bodied person, and he just goes in there, and you're about to pee on yourself. And, and he and leaves you a nice present. <laughs> that is the most, oh man. Then you can't fit in the regular stall, so you have to end up cathing in the corner or in the urinal, in front of your urinal. You know how people are looking at you all funny, and, you know, they're thinking it's it's hard to do. You know, you almost fall into the urinal you're so close you know so that stuff is just drives me crazy so i don't know if any able-bodied people are listening respect the disabled stall please we really really you know don't if it's something's available take the regular stall don't i know you think probably the disabled stall is unused and cleaner but please and also flush because don't leave your turd burglars or you know your funky smelling stuff in there have the decency to flush the toilet, please. Just something I, you know, really appreciate. Yeah. And, and yeah, and, and the other one for me is, um, okay, how many times has this happened where you guys are crossing the street, maybe halfway across, and unsuspectingly someone comes behind you and tries to push you without them asking first if it's okay to do so? And you almost causing you to fall out of your chair because you, it, it, you know, we have balance issues at, at spinal cord injuries. And all of a sudden someone surprises you from behind and pushes you and then says, is it okay? Can I help you? Let me help you. Dude, you're invading my private space. You can't just come up and help yourself to, I know you mean well and you think it's something to do, but please keep in mind that we have physical limitations, balance issues, like I said before. And, and it, you know, by the time you get to the end of the ramp, you got that lip of death, like Richard was mentioning, you know, Absolutely. and they try to push you through that. Oh my God. You got to tell them, no, no, stop. I can't go up there. Cause then if your front caster hits, you're flying out like Superman and scraping your whole forehead, you're lo- <laughs> you know what I mean? On the, on that end of the curb cut or, or losing a tooth and, you know, breaking a leg. So, oh my God. I, I don't know. Have, has that happened to you guys before? Yeah. That, that yeah. All of a sudden all out the of the time. blue and you don't see the guy. They just dis- appear right behind you. You just go, right. They, they, they go, okay. Here, here's some help. Before you, they say it, you already feel that point from yeah. behind. Right. And you go, and it throws your whole pushing off, yeah. right? You're on a good pushing and you're motivated yeah. to get to a cross and all of a sudden, you know, Mr. Good Samaritan, which I ain't, I'm not, I'm not turning you guys down for no reason, but if I need help, I'm going to ask for it and instruct you how to push me. You know what it is? Safely. Is the, I call it the Boy Scout syndrome. They want to do the good deed for the day, but they fail to ask you if you need it or want it. Right. So when that's about to happen, if you see somebody, look them in the eye and tell them, I need help or I do not need help. Cordially, thank you, sir or ma'am. I really I'm appreciate okay. it. I really appreciate thank you it. for asking. And, right. and and I forgot something. Do you not l- just love it when you're rolling and somebody goes? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, like thumbs up. It's thumbs like, up. Like yeah, dude, I, you're looking good in that wheelchair, man. They have no idea what we have to deal through on a you know twelve hour days in this thing. It sucks, but you know what? I, I look at it as a sign of um of uh what's mutual that word respect called? no it's another no. word i'm looking for it's called um uh, empathy empathy uh motivation um and oh inspiring for them oh, seeing yeah. us struggling and pushing and making the best out of our situation i think it's a feel good for them too you know true and it gives them a perspective on their lives like dude my life isn't so bad i could still walk why am i depressed over these little issues look at this poor man could barely cross the street and trying to go shopping on his own and and pushing up this ramp so you know i take it in stride and and be like i can't give you a thumbs up because i'm a c56 quadriplegic but i could you know i could smile and kind of throw up the quad fist and say yeah. thank you i you i know. hope i hope that they are you 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 you're the um how do we call this um you're the permanent optimist yeah most optimistic i'm i'm thinking no man these people are going like dude better you than me so oh. yeah oh yeah oh yeah sometimes you know it, yeah. that that happens when 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 you encounter those people who who look at your wife or look at whoever that you're with and address them when they want instead of addressing you. Right. It's kind of 
uh, thinking like you are less of a, of an individual or a mind, uh, because you're in a wheelchair. Like an indirect diss. It exactly <laughs> is a diss, man. Don't do that. It bugs me. It bugs everyone. Listen, we're the same. The thing is, we're not standing or walking. We got injured. We're in a, we, and it can happen to anybody. Trust Absolutely. you me. Cause I thought I would be the last person who will be on a wheelchair in the planet. Okay. It happened to me. It can happen to you. It can happen to anybody at any time. So I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if it is because I'm, I'm relatively new to an injury, only six years. You guys have been rolling for a lot longer. Right. But. Especially at this time when I'm getting used to um, all the things that revolve around being in a wheelchair. Right. Now I'm beginning to realize some of the things that before I just accepted. And to tell you the truth, I'm not happy with it. But you guys are so serene about it. I'm like, bring that cop here right now. I want you to be in this parking space right now. I give this woman $1,100 ticket. You're doing the right. Time heals all wounds. That's right. I got one one thing I want to throw at you guys. What's up? You ever sit on a corner waiting for your friends or whatnot? And somebody you know, gave you a dollar? Yeah, and people give you money. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool, but it, you know, at the same time, it's like, hey, I'm not a bum. So, that is funny, dude. I'm not. I'm not sitting down here waiting for a hand me down. I didn't even ask. Richard, I'm just, yeah. I'm just over. You the, shouldn't have uh, been drinking uh, that uh, cup of coffee, uh, no, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because they think you know you got your cup of coffee drinking, and they're probably thinking you you you're you're asking your for cup change, of money. right? Oh my god, that is hilarious! Uh, no, seriously, yeah, no. that has happened to me. I agree, it happened yeah. to me about I could count maybe three or four times where they you need some help, and they're trying to dig in their pocket. Oh no, no, I have to hey. stop them and say I'm good. Unless I'm not it's too a, proud. I'll take the money. Unless it's a hundred dollar bill or a twenty spot, I'll I'll <laughs> I'll swallow my pride and take it and go you know go watch a movie. It's <laughs> never happened to me, but I. I I I kind of did this when I was at the hospital, Casa Colina. I was bored. I would be in the hallway, and I see people. The people who worked there and were around, they knew who I was. But right. I would know when there will be somebody who is visiting and have never seen me. Right. I'll be right outside my room, and when I see him out there, I'll come bring out my cup. <laughs> but back then, you know, I was just, you know, bored, right. but never in public. But, no, I've never had that. And... You know, I don't know how I would react, but um, again, you know, that's a stereotype that perhaps you people, uh, uh, able body, should be uh, aware of. Not everyone who is in a wheelchair is indigent or is looking out for a handout. Maybe it's because Boris dresses like Carlton from Fresh Prince. Oh, I forgot. Where. Oh, yeah, you got to pop that collar, bro. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. That's right. And, and, um, yeah, all this stuff we like to share with you guys. And, and, uh, we want to make sure you guys, um, give us your pet peeves, you know, give us your perspective on maybe we didn't touch on, on certain things that get you upset about, you know, you, you being in a chair, your spinal cord injury and, and things that bother you. Maybe when you were in therapy in the hospital, that's a whole another, you know, I'm uh, sure there topics. are a thousand more. That's right. That's so let us drop know. it in the comments. That's Absolutely. right. So, uh, you know, we're going to wrap, wrap up, up here and, uh, Rich is going to tell us where to find us of one of our places that we, uh, that we hang. Yeah. On YouTube, we hang out at Club Pushroom. So join the club, subscribe, drop us a note. We'd love to hear from you. Also, iTunes for those of you who have, uh, Apple um, devices uh, and are connected to iTunes, go in on Pushrim. Check out Pushrim and you will be able to listen to us. And also go to our website, www.pushrim.com. That's right. And uh, also we're up on uh, Podbean uh, podcast directories now. So, uh, I mean, do a search. We're out in, in different, uh, social networks, arenas, do a, um, and, and let other people know, your friends, family. It's not only for people that suffer spinal cord injuries, but their friends and families that want to learn more or get a better perspective of what kind of life we deal with. Please. The have caregivers, join. too. Caregivers is, is a big medical thing. Medical professionals. That's right. We have a group on, on our website for, for caregivers and, and, and other stuff we, that people can connect with. So lately we've been getting an influx of, uh, international members uh this morning i was um uh, able to greet somebody from brazil 
and either yesterday or the day before, another Brazilian individual uh, joined. We've had a couple of people from Mexico. So that's right. We're all over the world. We're global. <laughs> all right. So uh, in wrapping, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us and uh, stay with us on our next episode. Subscribe, hit our like button on our YouTube channel, and uh, spread the word for us. We'd like to hear your... Uh, you know, your, your comments and suggestions, yes. One more thing. Yes. Um, look forward to having our first uh, guest speaker next that, next uh, podcast. That's right. Thank you, Boris, for, for letting us know. Yeah, we're going to start mixing it up a little bit, bringing in uh, life stories, organizations, uh, businesses, and uh, just to give you guys more of a you know variety of shows. So thanks a lot for uh, having us, and we'll catch you on the next show. Peace See out. Ya. Peace out.